Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar AI, and this is a deep dive on the Dodge and Burn tool. Let's get into it. I've got a gray sheet of paper here because this is a great way to show you how the tool works. Dodge and Burn is down here at the, almost at the very bottom in the Professional tab. If you look in the bottom right corner here of your screen, under Professional, it's the next to last tool. Just click on Dodge and Burn and it's very simple and straightforward. Dodging and burning is basically gives you the ability to either lighten or darken parts of the photo using a brush. That's what we're gonna do. Now there's some settings to be aware of as well. You can see my mouse here. You can see that the plus sign is in the center. And if I hit the X key, it becomes a minus sign. You'll also notice in the bottom right corner that it's gone to darken from lighten. Minus is taking away light. You're darkening it or subtracting. And plus is you're adding light or lightening. So keep that in mind. Also, uh, and these are keystrokes at least on a Mac. If the right, uh, the right bracket key will increase the size of your brush, and the left bracket key will decrease the size of your brush. You can also hold the shift key, and if you go to the left, you will decrease the softness of the brush to where it's uh, completely a hard brush, which means there's no uh, gradient along the edge. It's just a hard stop between uh, the adjustment you're making and the area that's not adjusted. And then if you hold the shift key and go back to the right, uh, excuse me, with the uh, right bracket key, you will get a softer brush. My personal opinion is, use a soft brush because you're brushing in light or dark and you don't I don't think you want a hard edge. I think that you want it to be kind of soft like that. Now let me demonstrate how this works on a photo. I'm on lighten and I'm going to go with a big brush just to make it easy to see and I'm at strength of 100 which I would never use just to be clear but I'm going to go like this and as you can see I have got um, a, uh, a brighter spot because I'm in lighten. I've got a fairly large brush, so it's made a big area, and I've got strength of 100, so it's getting it as bright as possible. Now, if I hold down the shift key and take the bracket key, the left bracket key, I'm making a harder brush. Let me show you the difference between what that is. So this top one is a soft brush. You can see it's kind of a gradual fade from where it's light to where it's dark, and the bottom is a hard brush or a hard edge where it's an a very abrupt difference between what's been lightened and what remains dark. So keep that in mind. That is why I prefer to have a much softer brush because I like that gradient area there as opposed to that hard overlap where if you don't do it exactly perfect, um, you're generally gonna see the edges. It's gonna bleed into parts of the photo you don't want it to bleed into. Now that's lighten. Darken is basically the same thing. So if I come over here with darken, I'm gonna get like that. And then once again, if I shift and left bracket key, I make a hard edge and there it is, a hard edge dark brush. Now there's also a button here that's called erase. And I'm gonna go right bracket key. You notice there's no plus or minus um, because you're not lightening or darkening, you're just erasing. So you can just click on erase and all you do is you paint over all the stuff you already did and fix your mistakes if you make them or you know whatever it is. You can just uh, back up a move and basically erase the lightening or darkening that you did. One other thing to be aware of here, I'm gonna go back to lighten and I'm gonna take the strength down. Actually, a couple more things to be aware of. Let's say I wanna lighten a little bit. I'm holding my left finger down um, on the mouse, and I'm using my right finger to drag it. You'll notice I'm at strength of 47, as you can see in that right corner, but it, I keep going over it, over it, over it. It's not getting any brighter. If you wanna paint over and over the same area, let go of your mouse, then click again, and then start painting. You can see that that is getting lighter. And then let go, click again, paint again, let go, click again. And that's how you can gradually increase the lightness or brightening um, and also gradually decrease the darkening or make it darker if you want to. So just remember, let go, paint more, let go, paint more, let go, et cetera, et cetera. And that basically stacks the adjustment so that you get a progressively lighter and lighter spot or darker and darker spot. And the last thing to be aware of here is the overall amount, which is basically an opacity slider for this tool. So I could come in, let's say I've done some darkening. Uh, that's a really hard edge. So let me go back and adjust that. I'm gonna get a, a softer edge and I'm gonna take this strength down. Notice that the settings remained from how I'd previously used the tool. Let's say I'm gonna do that and I wanna do that uh, and I wanna go back and darken this. So remember, I'm letting go and then re-clicking. Let's say I've done all that and again, we're pretending here as this as if this is a picture that I've edited, but let's pretend I'm happy with all of that, but it's just a little too much. 
That's where the overall amount slider or what I call the opacity slider comes in. It's, it defaults to 100, but if you take this down and I start reducing it, you can see that the impact of my lightening and darkening is being reduced as I reduce the overall amount. You can especially see that here in this area where it was completely black. There it is, 100% dark in that area, and the overall amount or opacity slider is going to take that down. So that's a great way to kind of fine-tune your adjustments that you make in a photo. If you feel like, hey, I really like it, but it's just a little too much. I was a little heavy-handed, a little too bright there, a little too dark there, that sort of thing. You can come in with the overall amount slider, just reduce that opacity, and get the look that you want. Now I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to go show you how I actually use this on a photo. Okay, other than a crop, I'll click the before and after. You can see I've done nothing else to this photo. Let's go down here to dodge and burn and get started. Now I'm going to start with lighten. Um, brush size is brush size. God, that's hard to say. Brush size is just brush size. So depending on the size of the area you want to adjust, I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go about like that. Adjust the brush size as you see fit, but I will recommend um, on every photo with strength to always start kind of low. I usually start somewhere between 10 and 15, depending on what I want to do. So, you know, like 12 is a pretty safe place to start. And I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to lighten the uh, this castle. This is Bodium Castle in southern England. And I'm going to come through here and I'm just kind of painting over this because I want to lighten it a little bit. And, you know, I think that looks okay, but it's probably not quite enough. So that's where I'd come back, and I would probably lift the strength a little bit. Maybe I'll go to 20, and then come in, and here you go. I'm getting a little bit better visibility into it for two reasons. Number one, I already brushed it at uh, 12 strength, and now I'm coming back and brushing it again with 20. So it's kind of stacking a little bit, um, but I just recommend going slow and taking your time because there's no race, there's no reason to hurry, and it's better, I think, to just go slow and get it right than to kind of hurry up and get it done. So I'm going to do a little bit more here on the castle. I think that looks fine. The other thing uh, that I think is great about Dodge and Burn, because what Dodge and Burn is doing, it's basically you're rearranging the light. Light, the difference between light and dark is contrast. So as you're brightening and darkening things, you're creating more contrast. And so that's something I wanted to do in this photo. And I think one of the things that Dodge and Burn is really good at is basically helping to lead your eye through a photo or into a photo, lead the viewer's eye. And so when you have a pathway, Dodge and Burn comes in really handy because you can darken other areas and then light up the pathway a little bit and just draw the viewer into the photo, which is what I'm trying to do here. So I'm gonna go get darken and I'm gonna go with a really big um, mouse here simply because I'm trying to cover a lot of ground and this is kind of gonna be sloppy. In fact, I'm at strength of 50. So this is a good way to hit a race. Let's increase the size of that and come over here and take that uh, darkening out of there. Okay, um, so check your settings before you just start painting. I'm gonna go back to darken. I'm gonna go to strength of about 25. And I know I said start at, uh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna go at about 20. And I know I said start low, um, but because I practice this, I already know it needs to be a little bit darker. Note that over here in the highlights, these highlights are basically blown out. Dodge and Burn is not a tool to use to go completely fix highlights. And while I'm saying that, I should also say it's not a tool to use by itself. It's not a one slider to fix all the ills of a photo. It's something that I use in combination with like the Light Tool or Accent AI up here in Enhance AI. So I would basically do those kind of things first and get my photo looking mostly how I want it and then come in and use Dodge and Burn to kind of fine tune some things. I'm not doing that in this photo because this is not how I'm editing the photo. This is a demo of how Dodge and Burn works. So just keep that in mind, but I definitely recommend that you do other things first and then maybe come in uh, with Dodge and Burn and do some fine tuning or adjusting to the light as you see fit. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. I'm going to go back to lighten and I think my brush is pretty good like that. I'm going to go a little bit higher now uh, and I'm gonna, I just want to brighten this uh, castle a little bit more. It was a sunset. The sun was out of frame to the right. So this whole front of the castle was pretty much in shadow, as you can see. And I definitely want a little bit brighter look here um, on that walkway. And I'm purposefully leaving the edges a little bit darker, simply because I think visually it kind of adds to it. And it makes it look like the center of the uh, boardwalk thing here 
is more heavily trafficked, which let's be honest, it is. No one's going to walk along the side the whole way. You got that open boardwalk in front of you, you're pretty much going to walk down the center of it unless you're in a crowd or whatever, right? So that's something I'm doing there. And then maybe I would come back and do a little bit more here just because I really want to brighten that up. Uh, it's also bringing up a little bit of the texture in the wood, which I think looks nice. And because of the increased visibility in the castle also, you're seeing a little bit more of the texture in those stones. So something about like that. And now that you look at it, you're like, Jim, the light hasn't really changed that much. It doesn't seem like. And this is where I think Dodge and Burn can be a little bit deceptive, not because of how the tool works, just because of how our eyes get used to things. But when I turn this off, I made a pretty significant difference in the photo. There it is before. The front of the castle is really dark. The boardwalk is really dark. And after, I've definitely rearranged the light quite a bit. And once again, I might come in and use overall amount and say, yeah, it's a little too bright in that boardwalk, Jim, a little too bright in the castle. You know, I expect there to be a little bit more shadow there because the sun is out of frame. Okay, so then you pull the overall amount down, let's say to, you know, this 74 that I'm at or whatever. Uh, and then again, before and after, there it is before, definitely darker castle and darker boardwalk. And after, there it is, a bit brighter there and better visibility into the sort of the details and the textures in the photo. Made a little bit of difference. I didn't go real heavy. A little bit of difference in the sky, especially in the left and the water, but not a whole lot of difference where it's really blown out. And that's why I said it's not a tool that you would count on necessarily instead of highlights or Accent AI or you know Sky Enhance or things like that. I would definitely do other things first and then come in and sort of fine tune the light in a photo with Dodge and Burn. So that's kind of how I approach it to each his own, just season to taste, do whatever you feel is right. That's how I go about using Dodge and Burn in my photos. And that's my deep dive on this tool. Super powerful, super useful, really handy to have around. And sometimes let's be honest, your, your photo, you're just like, I'm just missing a little something. I don't know what it is. Sometimes maybe you just want to try Dodge and Burn. You've maybe tried color, you've tried detail. The major things to think about are light, detail, and color. This is all about the light and getting it right and helping you to fine tune it and sort of massage it and arrange it in your photo. Dodge and Burn's great at that. Hope this helps my friends. Thanks for watching. You guys take care of yourselves out there. I'll see you in the next photo. Have fun editing and adios.